All right, hello again. This is Jeff Scott, your instructor for the online version of 152, 157 website development XHTML CSS for the fall 2015 semester at Blackhawk Technical College. I'm going to go over chapter three, the lecture portion, right now. So I'm up to page 81, and chapter three is called Configuring Color and Text with CSS. You can take a look at the stuff that's in here. This chapter is all about CSS. The previous chapter was all about HTML. Now, I'm going to put a little slide or a little thing here to get, and it may or may not make a whole lot of sense right now. And if it doesn't, please, by all means, don't let that bother you. Okay, really and truly, don't let it bother you. All right, so HTML, which is our hyper, and I'm going to make this real big so we can all see it. All right, so we've got HTML, and that's the hypertext markup language. Okay, we've got CSS, which is cascading style sheets. And we've got JavaScript, all right, which is a programming language. Okay, so why am I showing you this? All right, because HTML is concerned with content. Cascading style sheets are concerned with presentation. Oops. And JavaScript is concerned with logic. Keep that in mind as we go through here. We started talking about how we add content to our web page. Now we're going to come in and we're going to talk about how to change the presentation of that content. I'm going to go back to the same file that I was just using and I'm going to add some CSS to it. In the last chapter of the book we talk about JavaScript and one of the JavaScript libraries that's called jQuery. Let's not worry about that for right now. So. We, and when you look at all the stuff that's here, this is all about CSS. There's different ways that you can put in CSS. I'll show you some of them, maybe all of them. And finally, we'll look at the CSS validator at the very end. Now, this is kind of the, the site for learning about CSS. You can go out to http colon slash slash www.cssengarden.com. Okay. Style sheets add typographical styles and spacing to print media. CSS provides the functionality of style sheets for web developers. All right, so that's what we're going to be looking at. Now, when you use CSS, you can use it in at least three different ways. You can use what's called inline CSS, which means that, for instance, if you've ever seen a kid's book, where it says once upon a time and the O in once is real big, I could just use it on a single character like that with, inter with, with uh, inline CSS. I could use what's called internal CSS. So if I, wanted, if I had a site with several pages, web pages in it, and I wanted one page to look different, I could do that. Or I can use external CSS, which I can have it apply towards any and every page on the site. So we'll look at all that stuff. Why do you use CSS? Greater control. You're separating the style from the structure, or what I call the presentation from the content. You can store that presentation in a separate document. I'll show you how to do this. That'll make your HTML document smaller. Plus, it provides for easier site maintenance. I've already mentioned these to you. Inline styles, an embedded style sheet, which I called an internal style, external styles, and imported styles. We'll, we'll talk about all of those in here. I'll let you read this yourself, but I'd rather show it to you than just read PowerPoint slides to you. So let's look at these. All right. Again, I'm going to go back here to the document that I had. And if you're following along in the book, we're right at the beginning. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here 
and I'm going to first show you what is typically referred to as internal or embedded CSS style. So I'm going to put in here a special tag that's called style. All right. And I'm going to say in here that P, and I'm going to put in here color red. Okay. Now, before I even explain what that means, just putting in those lines, let's go back to where we ran this before. I guess we don't have it out there, so I wanted to show you. Let, let me show you the before and after pictures. So let me remove this. All right. Now I'm going to do a run in Chrome. There it is. You saw this in the last chapter. So now I'm going to come back in there and paste that back in. Go back to the same thing that we just looked at. And if I hit the button that's right here, it looks like an arrow that's curvy and points to the right. That means reload the page. Now watch how the page changes. Notice how every paragraph tag is now, every paragraph is now in red. All right? And everything that I put in here was all in paragraph tags. So what made that magic happen? The magic that made that happen was CSS. I just applied embedded styles into the style. I added a style element in here. All right. So why? What? This right here where you've got that P tag, all right, that's called a selector. So this says select all paragraph tags. And then in between here in the curly braces is what do I want to do? I want to change their color to red. Well, let's, let's try another one. How about font size? And we'll make this 24 point. All right, I'm trying to show you some of this so that the effect that you see is going to be somewhat dramatic. All right. I said take the regular font size, which is like 10 or 12 points, and make it 24 points. And you can see the difference. You can see how much bigger this all got. Now, notice I didn't apply it way down here, so it wasn't shown there. So if I put some text in here that's not in a paragraph, all right, so I say, hello, world. How are you today? Put a line break tag after that, all right? And I come back into here, and I refresh, there's my hello world. That's still in my default size. This just says stuff that's within paragraphs. Make it red and 24 points. So this is my selector. These right there are called my declaration properties. And these here and here are referred to as my declaration values. What if I want the background color to be a different color? How about this? And let's make it a little bit smaller. We'll make it 16 point. But I'm going to come over here and I'm going to say uh, body. Remember, we're just starting to learn this stuff. If, if it doesn't all make sense, that is not only fine. Background. That is to be expected color gold. I could say yellow. I think it'll accept gold, but we'll find out. All right. There we go. In case you haven't figured it out already, I'm a Packer fan. All right. So what did we do right there? We told the system everything that's inside of the body, give it a background color of gold. Every paragraph, give it a color of green and make it 16 point font. And there are several examples in here. They talk about the color factory, uh, et cetera. There's, a, there's just a boatload of examples in here. Also, if you turn to, to Appendix E that starts on page 637 in the book, they give you a little appendix, which is kind of a primer to using CSS. All right? So there's a whole bunch of stuff that we can set in here. I'm just showing you a couple examples where everything is really, wow. You know, it's like, this is just unreal. 
Well, let's come in here and let's say that we want uh, our UL list items. We want those to have a color of orange. And we want those to have a font type of, I think this will work, Comic Sans. And so this stands out a little bit. Let's say for our ordered lists, we want those to be blue, and we want those to have a font type of Ariel. All right. Hopefully, I didn't make any mistakes in here. So let's take a look at what we just did. I did. I've got to uncomment all this stuff that I commented out previously. Okay. So let's go in now and down down here in between the word superscript with superscripted and our last tag, there's going to be some stuff. Notice my first order list. Notice how they're blue and they have a certain font. They're orange and they have a certain font. So I can apply CSS to virtually anything that's on a page. All right? And we can make it even easier for ourselves by doing other things. Now what I want to show you before we go on is I'm going to take that all that style stuff, everything that I put in here, and I'm going to grab it and remove it. I'm going to remove it and I'm going to put it into its own file. I didn't put those style tags in there. I like to add a little bit of white space in here just because I think that when you put a little in, it makes it easier to, to kind of tell what's happening. Notice that each one of these, if it's only a single line, it's not mandatory that you put a semicolon on the end. But when you have multiple lines, all right, like this, that, that semicolon is mandatory. It's just a good idea to get used to putting it in all over the place. All right. Now I'm going to save this to my desktop, and I'm going to save this as test.css. You'll notice how the colors change again. All right. And now I've got to go back to my index file, and I have to tell it to use that file so I don't need those style tags anymore. I use what's called a link tag. And I say type, this is the MIME type, equals text slash CSS. And href, I have to tell it to where to go look for it, equals test.css. Now if I did this right and I save this and run it again, it should look exactly the same. There's what it looked like before. All right. And I'm going to bring it up again. So I'm going to do a run Chrome. Well, doesn't look the same, does it? Somehow I goofed up. I missed something or whatever. So let's take a quick look. Link type equals href equals. Didn't think I missed anything, but evidently I did. We'll, we'll find out what it is. All right. So as we go and work our way through here, all I'm trying to show you is that there is more than one way to put in the same information. Link, type equals, href equals. So I'm missing something here, but I don't, offhand, I don't know what it is. All right, so let's see. Did I save it as test CSS? I did. Is it on the desktop? Yes, it is. So I'm missing something. I jumped ahead quite a bit. Link. Ah, I've got to say what it is. Rel equals style sheet. I have to let it know what it is. Technically, this isn't even necessary. All right. So now let me save it. Run, launch. Boom. That's the one that we ran 
and that's the one that had the mistake, and that's the one that had the mistake, and that's the other one. So you'll notice they look the same. But the difference is, in this case, I took my CSS and put it into an external file. All right? So we'll get to that, but it'll be later on in the chapter, just so you're aware of that. Okay? All right, let's jump back and take a look again at our slides. So I've shown you inline. No, I haven't. I've shown you embedded and external. Imported, typically with imported, what that means is you might work for a company that has a standard, it has a standard uh, bunch of CSS files, one or more files. You bring them into your document by importing them. And I'm going to show you the inline in just a minute. All right. So again, I already mentioned this to you. This is the same slide that you see in your book on page 83. The selector body, the declaration property color, the declaration value blue. That says the body should have a background color of blue. And actually, it might be font color. I don't remember. I don't know. We'll, we'll take a look. Here's some of the common CSS properties. This is table 3.1 that's in your book on page 85. And the author does a great job of explaining what each one is. The way to learn is you make yourself a real simple HTML document. Put a few paragraphs in it. Put some H1 headers in it, H2 headers, whatever. Put some uh, or ordered lists and unordered lists in. Then just start playing. That's how you learn. You can use color on web pages. And there's different ways of using color. I already showed you one way of using color in here. All right, notice I said here, background color green. I could have also said background color, color pound. That's how much red I want, which is none. That's how much green I want. That's FF, which is maximum. And that's how much blue I want. All right, so if I save that and I go back, in fact, let's, uh, that'll work. Um, and I go back to here and I refresh, it shouldn't look any different. Well, I guess it does because the green on there is different. It's kind of hideous with a yellow background, but you get the idea. So I can do the same kind of thing. My background color, instead of making it gold. Notice if I don't make it gold, if I just make it white, all right, which is pound F, 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 which is the presence of everything. Notice then how different this ends up looking. The green looks much different against a white background as opposed to a yellow background. All right, I can also come in here and I can say, well, I want a red background. So FF for all red, 0, 0, 0, 0 for no green and no blue. And when I run that, it'll look much different because I've got a red background. Finally, let me show you one more time and let's put all blue in here. So that's zero red, zero green, total blue. All right, and if I run that, it again will look totally different. All right. Notice I've got blue here and I got blue on blue so you can't even see it. All right. Finally, these don't have to be uh, zeros and Fs here. I can put in, for example, C, 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 which I think is uh, kind of a variation of gray. And there you go. That's working with colors. There's different ways of working with colors. For using colors on rep web pages, I've shown you using the hexadecimal colors. Appendix H in your book on page 649 shows a color palette. There are also 216 colors that are known as web safe colors. They display in a similar manner on both a PC and a Mac. Other than that, you have no guarantee that they're going to the color will be exactly the same. This is not a web safe color, I don't believe. All right. So the color syntax, there's different ways that you can do it. They show you on page 87 using color red and color pound FF0000 and some other ways that it can be done using RGB. All right. 
I want to show you, though, one thing I have not shown you. And that is, I'm going to come in here and say, we're, instead of, hello world, how are you today? I'm going to come in here, and I'm not going to use, I'm going to say, once upon a time, it began. All right? And when I run this, there's our once upon a time it began. But what I want is I want that O in once for once upon a time to be really big. So to do that, I can come through here and I can use a style attribute right in line. So I can say style equals, and I might goof this up because it's been a while. I'm doing it off the top of my head. So font size uh say 36 point and I'm going to put that into that O for once for once upon a time that's all I want and we'll know real quick whether or not I did it correctly or not all right so if this O gets real big I did it right and it looks like I didn't all right again not the first time I made a mistake in front of you won't be the last time I made a, a mistake in front of you All right, so that's I'm trying to show you an inline style. So let's see. Let me look at the author here and, and, and see if the author has got a better example than the one I just gave you. In fact, let's, we'll do this. We'll put it into a paragraph. That might be a little bit easier like that. So we're going to say P, style equal, font size, 36 point, end it. So I don't know if that'll fix it or not. I'll, I will need an ending paragraph tag here. Once upon a time, it began. You change that to an ending paragraph tag. All right. And if it doesn't work, we'll keep working on it until it does. Well, that took the whole thing and made it 36 point. But really what I wanted was just the O to be 36 point. All right, so style equals this, O, and that style tag, that appeared to be irrelevant. It didn't like that. All right, and I know there's a way to do it, and I know I'm making this much harder than it has to be. Just to show you, though, I'll put a BR tag right here. Okay, let's, let's, we'll do this. We'll end the paragraph here. And we'll start another paragraph tag here. All right. It's going to look a little funny, but just to show you the point. Notice the O is real big and nothing else is. Okay. All right. We'll look at plenty of examples of this as we go on in here. All right. When I did this before and I started to put in some of this stuff in here, and I've got font size, font type. That actually should have said font family. All right. And let's try, we'll change this. The reason I need quotes around this is that there are blank spaces between the words. So there's Times New Roman. All right. Okay. Now, what if I don't have Arial? Then I can put a list in here. So I can say comma. Times New Roman, comma, and then let's say sans serif. This says, if at all possible, if I have an Arial font, use it. If I don't have it, look for a Times New Roman font. If I have it, use it. This is my backup. Usually when you use a font family like this, the last thing you put in there is either, either it's going to be serif or sans serif, because virtually every kind of system has that. So let's go and see if I made it better, or worse, or whatever. All right, so I changed, you may, may or may not remember, but I did change the font type there. All right. There's a lot more font properties. So for instance, if I go in here and I Google C 
CSS property list. Here's our old friend W3 schools again. And those are all properties you can set for color, etc. And they start to go through them one at a time. What's nice about W3 schools is you go, well, that doesn't show me much. Yes, it does, because if you put your mouse there, it shows you an example, and it says try it yourself. And notice what it's done. They've not only come through here in the background and added this little GIF, but they also changed the color right here. So notice if I change it to FF0, FF00, excuse me, FF0000, all right, I changed the color. I made it yellow. If I make it FF, 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 and I check to see the result, it's now white. All right. Now, this wouldn't make much sense, but if I put in 0000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000 and said see the result, notice it's black. So I don't see it. The text is there, but I don't see it. So I could come in here and say P for my, my paragraph tag. And again, I could come in here and say color yellow. And you notice it's all back. All right. W3 Sites is great because it's a teaching and learning site. I highly recommend you go out there and just practice. Just play around with things. Try things. You're not going to break anything. Again, there's different ways of doing colors. All right. And when you start to go through this, this is when you start to put on your hat. So instead of being a web developer, you're a web designer. And you start to think about what colors go well with what other colors. Now, I'm going to tell you something, and you may or may not agree with it. But if you look on here, that black and yellow doesn't look bad together. On the other hand, if I change this to orange, it's going to look like Halloween. Does that look good? That I mean, that's something you have to figure out. But if I come through there and I say background color, and I say pound C, 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 and I look at it, that's a little harder to read. All right. So you've got to make sure that you start looking at things with an eye so you can figure out what goes with what and what doesn't go with what. The author gives some guidelines in here. All right, there was the inline CSS. There's an example for an H1 heading. Let's grab her example here. All right, so when we came in here, do we have anything for H1 headings? No, we don't. Well, let's put something in. Let's say all H1 headings are to be a navy blue. So color, navy. I think it'll take that. We'll find out right now. All right, so let's go back into here. And you'll notice that it's navy. There's only one, but that's fine. It's, it's navy. If I wanted to include all of those tags in there, I could say H1 comma h2 comma h3 comma h4 comma h5 comma h6 all right now they should all turn blue and you'll notice that they do all right but if i want this this h2 tag to be a different color i can use an inline style so i can come in here and where there there's that h2 tag i can come through there and add this so h2 Style equals, and I'm making it red. All right, FF. Remember, red, red, green, green, blue, blue. So I'm going to save this, and let's see if that worked. You saw what it looked like. It was all blue. It's red. Well, I goofed up my tag there, but you get the idea. This is about as powerful as it gets in here. So where is that? Color equals. There, we've got that tag. That should remove it. And you'll notice that it's red. Again, play with this stuff, please. That's how you learn. I'm here as a facilitator. You learn probably a lot more by going through the examples that are here in the book yourselves.
So notice I can combine things. So I could combine in my H1 the color and the background color. So again, I could come in here. And where I did this, I can say color equals. All right. And semicolon background. I think it'll take just background. We're going to try that. Uh, so we'll make that gold. And you'll notice there's the background for it. And it's green. All right. So again, I can't harp on this too much to you. You will learn by trying and trying and trying and trying. And if you try and something doesn't work, it's not a failure. I don't mean to sound like your coach here, but it is truly a learning experience. One thing I like is over the past weekend, I went to went over to my mother-in-law's, and I also, in the same town, two of my sister-in-law's and their husbands live there. And one of the, one of the sister-in-law's, they just moved into a new house, and they had a housewarming party, so we went. And all the guys, they're all involved with the kids' Little League. They all have kids who are about 10 or 11 or 12 years old, all right? And it was kind of neat because on the back, uh, they had shirts for their Little League. And on the back, it said, my son never loses. He either wins or he learns. And I think that's a great philosophy. Try this stuff. If it doesn't work, it's a learning experience. I already showed you the inline style, so you've already seen that. And, you know, so we've looked at those already. All right. Again, the configuring text with CSS, these are some of the things that you can work with. All right. If you decide that you want to go in and you want to make something bold, so let's assume here that I wanted to take an entire paragraph. And this paragraph right here, my first ordered list, and I wanted to make it bold. You know I could come in here, and again, I should use strong. So I could come in here with strong. All right. Not a problem. So I come in here from my first ordered list, and it is bolded. It's hard to tell, but it is bolded. Now, what if I want to do all of them? I want every paragraph to be bolded. I can take this strong and put it in every paragraph, or I can come over to my CSS, and for my paragraphs, I can say font, weight, bold. And it will do the same thing for me. So when I come in here now, all of my paragraphs are now bolded. All right? Again, very, very powerful stuff. I'm just scratching the surface on what's available here. All right? Font sizes, notice that you can play with font sizes. And there's different ways that you can set them. You can use text, XX small which is the same thing as saying 8 pixels, or 6 points, or 50%. You can say XX large, which is the same thing as using 2EM. We'll talk about M's in a bit. Or 30 pixels, or 24 point, or twice the regular size. So there's a lot of different ways this stuff can be done. I've mentioned font family to you before, so you've seen that. We've looked at embedded styles. Here's some more properties. line height, text align, etc. All right, so for text align, just to show you, I think, again, I'm trying to be at least somewhat here as we're going through this. All right, I'm trying to be at least a little bit visual. So we've got the color, we've got the background, and I can put these on multiple lines. I like to line my stuff up like this. All right, background gold, text align, right all right now take a look at where it's got that tag my first tag now it's right aligned all right again I keep showing you example after example after example because that is the only way that this stuff will actually start to really make a lot of sense to you you can also set what are called classes. So in other words, in other words, what if in this example that I showed you previously, 
this was kind of a poor way to do this. H1 and H2 and H3 and H4 and H5 and H6. I could just have a class here that was called dark text. So I put a period there, meaning it's going to be a class, and I call it dark text. Okay? Now, notice what happens when I do this. Everything that's navy, it now goes away. All right, I want to bring all that back. Okay. So now I can come back here, and I can, I've got this. So that's a class. It starts with a period. I can use that as many times on a page as I want to. So what I'm going to do is every time in here I've got an H1 tag, I'm going to say class equals dark text. All right? And I'm also going to do that for every other paragraph. Just so it stands out. All right, now when I come back in and run this again, there's my dark text again. See that in every other paragraph. All right. Well, what if I, I have something special that I only want to do once on a page? Then I don't use a class like this. I use what's called an ID. And that is, I have to put a pound sign in there. So let's say that only once on a page, only once. Uh, so I'm going to say here pound footer. And I want my footer, because there's only one footer on my page, to have a text align of center. And I want a font family of serif. And I want a font size of 30 point going to look a lot different when we do and let's give it a color too so we'll give it here a color of red all right so that's everything now I haven't applied that yet so if I go back to this and I refresh you can see down at the bottom what my footer looks like now I'm going to take some of this code that's in here some of the code that's in here and I'm just going to comment it out so all my, my unordered lists, et cetera, I'm going to comment that out just so you can see everything that's happening here. But now at the bottom where I've got this, I'm going to use a paragraph tag here, and I'm going to say ID equals footer. Right, so I applied the ID property. So that should, if we did it correctly, should do all this. Let's look and see if indeed it does. There it is. It's centered, it's red, it's 30 point. All right. So I've quickly shown you how to use an ID and how to use a class. That's what, pardon my pun because it's not meant to be funny, but that's what this particular 152-157 class is about. All right. So that was the class selector I showed you and the ID selector. There's also a descendant selector. And I have shown you that, but I'm going to show it again. All right. So what if I want, what if I want only, okay, so I'm going to show you something in here to have it make some sense. What if I only want, I'm going to, I'm going to put this unordered list back in here again. All right, I'm going to put that back in there. And I'm going to put a paragraph in here. And it's just going to say, this is some dummy text. Okay? And there's a reason for me doing this, so if you just bear with me for a second. So, this is some dummy text. doesn't look any different. All right? But now I'm going to come in into my CSS, and I'm going to say, there's my paragraph stuff, but if I have a paragraph that follows a UL, then I want that paragraph to have a color of white and a font size 
of 22 points. And let's see if I made it work or I made it worse. All right, so this is some dummy text. Well, you'll notice it didn't change the color. So there's something about it that it didn't like. All right. So let's see if I did my selectors backwards or whatever. Within an element assigned an ID name content. Okay. And actually the reason it didn't is that's not a descendant. That's not right within there. If I try, let's, this is going to screw things up, but just I want to show you something. So I'm putting that P tag within a UL tag, which is silly. You should never do that, but I want to see if I can make this work. All right, so notice how it changed. And you might say, no, it didn't. Well, to really show how it changed, it didn't change the color. It should have made it white. But it just did change the font size. All right. You're going to have a lot more with CSS selectors. You're going to have to take my word for it for now, but you will. We're going to go over example after example. As one of my old colleagues used to say, ad nauseum. All right. You can use a span tag. So notice what it says. Your needs are important to us. Span class equals company name. I want to go back and use this example and see if we can get that O for once upon a time to work because that's what I was looking for before. All right, so I'm going to grab this entire example that they have right here. And I'm going to put it into here where I had this once upon a time it began. So let me put that in here. It says your needs are important to us at, so again I'm going to say Class equals, all right, so I'm going to give it a class, and we're just going to call the class big. All right, and that's going to have an O in there for that once upon a time. So let me grab all that other stuff. So once upon a time, it began. All right, now nothing's going to happen now because I don't have a class named big but I'm going to put one in right now. There's big, font, size, 48, point. So let's see if I was able to actually fix what I tried to show you before. That's this right here. Well, it still has it looking the way that it looked before, so did I goof something up? Span, once upon a time it began. Span, class equal big, O. That actually should have worked. At least I believe that that should have worked. All right. I'm going to come back and I'm going to figure that out and I'm going to show you all of it because I want that stuff that you see here to go right here. I'm not sure right now why it's not. So let's look at the example that they had in the book. So let's see, do I still have that in here? Yeah. Your needs are important to us at span. Class equals this, span. Okay, we will work to build your website. I don't know what this is doing here, this VT thing, so I'm going to get rid of that. And let's change the name of the class to big. All right, to see if that works. And it didn't at Acme Web Design. We will work with you to build your website. So that should have been big. Your needs are important to us at Acme Web Design. We will work with you to build your website. That all looks good. Class equal big. When 
going to remove what I had in here before because it just looks a little funky right there. I'm looking at the coloring here and you'll notice how that's purple and then it goes to blue here which says to me that I'm missing something. And it's probably right in front of my face. You may even see it. These are important to us at span. There. That should help. So let's come back. All right. Still not a bigger size, which I thought that it would be. Span class equal big. Ah, period. Oh, Jeff. There it is. So let's go back into our old once upon a time thing. Oh, for once. Upon a time it began. Save. There it is. All right. We all learned something. Let's finish the chapter up. So I showed you a span example. I've already shown you the external style sheet example. Uh, I've shown you how to use the link statement. Okay. Uh, how to use an external style sheet. And finally, centering page content with CSS. We're going to go over this, but using this margin auto. We're going to go into that in a later chapter. Finally, this is how cascading works. All right. And what happens is the minor most takes precedence. So if you use if you use uh, if you don't have anything, the browser adds some CSS defaults. You overwrite those with your external styles. If you also have embedded styles, they overwrite the external styles. If you also have inline styles, they overwrite the embedded styles. And if you have those internal that I mentioned to you, the ones that are with the span, they overwrite everything. That's what the authors say. Finally, there is a validator also for CSS. So let's see if we can go in and validate the CSS that I just wrote. All right, so again, looks pretty similar by file upload. Uh, let's do the, uh, we'll do the, that so you can see it. Choose file. So I've got to go back to my desktop and I've got to find test.css. There it is. Check. Sorry, we found the following errors. So it found some stuff it didn't like. That's a good thing. It says that's not a valid color on line 33. So let's look at it. And it's not a valid color. That has to be a pound sign. That's probably why that didn't work before. All right, let's go back and run it again and look. There's that dummy text that I said before should have been white and it wasn't. All right, so now if I go in there and again say test.css, congratulations, no error found. Okay. So we've come to the end of our third chapter, the lecture for our third chapter. We were introduced to cascading style sheet rules. We configured a bunch of different styles. We applied CSS styles to our HTML. We also looked at a little bit at classes and IDs, and we validated. 